This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water, and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. But this map, yeah. so this, I'm curious. This map, yeah. this map is kind of fun because it's got it's kind of color coded map, and it'll have kind of like a COVID map, like where's the red zones? Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you know, and so it's got green zones for flushing is okay. Like, you know, United States and Northern Europe and Australia. And then you've got, you know, orange where it's like, man, maybe, maybe not, you know, mm-hmm. um, they've got Russia here is like orange, which I think is probably propaganda. Probably depends on what part of Russia. You're Anti-Russian in. propaganda <laughs> because, you know, I've been to Moscow and it, a yeah, flush and, you know, but have you been to Eastern Russia? Maybe Eastern. Yeah, your brother was it's in Eastern little, Russia. It's, little, it's probably wild a whole other. Yeah, he's probably pooping in by a tree or something it's out there, right? In ice. <laughs> Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Zulu Podcast. We're excited to have you on for another week. Another great chat. We had Mm -hmm. another awesome interview with Jeff Wigley. He was on, if you recall, just a few, I think it was a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago. Yeah. Um, With Veronica. With Veronica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an excellent interview. If you haven't listened to it, definitely recommend going back to listen to that episode. The PSAI episode. Yes, PSAI. This is like PSAI number two. Yeah. Because we're back with Jeff. Yeah, and Jeff is portable sanitation expert. I mean, we specifically dive in and talk to him a little bit about portable sanitation history and what that's like. But yeah, to go from IBM to portable sanitation. It's quite a jump. When did not, not really. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's all about technology, right? Like computers. It's true. Company. It's true. Yeah. You know, bits, IBM. bits and bytes of different kinds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff had quite a career swap, but let's not ruin it for our listeners. Oh, yeah. We're going to get into it. Oh, okay. No, we'll Sorry. Get into I thought you were it. just talking some weird poop term. I didn't know. Like, I, I, <laughs> oh, IBM. yeah. Like I IBS. Like, like, okay. But it sounds awfully <laughs> familiar. <laughs> it is funny. Why Why did they do that? IBM. We'll have to ask them mm-hmm. when it's so close. BM or IBS, both, you know, they couldn't get bowel the trademark. related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is related. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. But before we hop into Jeff's interview, we'll have our news minute from Darren. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. Uh, found um, uh, a map. Uh, it's, we'll, we'll send you the link to it. But it's uh, entitled Where You Can and Can't Flush Toilet Paper Around the World. Hmm. Oh. In case you're wondering, like, where can I flush toilet paper? And mm. for a lot of our listeners, we're like, Obviously, you always flush toilet paper. Where else would you do with it? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you, uh, for those of you that have been in other countries, you've been to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got back from Peru. Um, yeah, there's big signs that say... Don't flush. How do you say it in Spanish? Cállate. Honestly, I have no idea. No, anyway. <laughs> yeah. No flush I, Those arrow. are terms that I learned. That's not, you know, potty talk is you not part of my Spanish vocabulary, then? unfortunately. Wow. Okay, well, that's wow. something to work towards. Hey, it yeah. is, yeah. You know? so you're really isolating but yourself. They're very clear. Yeah. Do not flush the toilet paper. And they've got a, a, a waste basket that you're supposed to actually throw it into, mm-hmm. which personally I've never done. Mm-hmm. Never like, I'm going to flush this thing. Gonna throw yeah. it in there. That's pretty disgusting. But so, so I'm probably guilty of uh, clogging so, so up. So did you flush in Peru? Oh yeah, flush yeah, away. Dude, he's because Mar- I figure you know. No, no, I figure nobody else is flushing. So mm. what's a couple there things we go. of toilet paper? You so, know, just down there. Did you and, stand up and like salute when you did it? Yep. <laughs> you know, I actually video <laughs> played the Star Stangled Banner on your phone as yeah. it happened. Yeah, I've got lots <laughs> yeah. of uh, toilet footage in Peru. Um, which we'll maybe show on another episode. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, we'll want I, the update from you, Darren, about your Peru trip and all the goodness that might be happening. Yeah, there. yeah, we're excited about Peru that, uh, um, coming up. 
that story you just told though just reminded me of you know something I've, I I accidentally did once that you know wasn't a proud moment but one moment I was like you know having a normal wipe session uh-huh. and I was like I, don't know, I just was like thinking about something like really intently and I just like stood up and then I just threw the toilet paper into the trash can and then I like was like <gasps> and then I realized what had happened and like you know. Pinched like like a corner of it. it. Yeah, I'd retrieved it because it was right next to the toilet. But I just like slowly dropped it back in, and uh, you know. And then you still flushed it. Then well, I flushed point. it at that point. You know, because okay. oh, it's the dirty toilet paper. But I have thrown it into a trash accidentally before. Okay, but it was on accident. You weren't thinking, oh, I'm in Mexico, and no, you know, I was like, oh, I'm in my apartment. I think I've done it before, maybe in someone else's house accidentally. Well, excuse you from it, Quinn, because it seems like a mindless act. You know, your mind was elsewhere. Thank you. This is a tribunal. This is a a, a court. (laughs) Just giving you some grace. Thank you. Thank you. You always need the poop grace. But this map, (laughs) this map map is kind of fun because it's got, it's kind of color coded map and it'll have kind of like a COVID map. Like where's the red zones? Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you know, and so it's got green zones for flushing is okay. Like, you know, United States and Northern Europe and Australia. And then you've got, you know, orange where it's like, man, maybe, maybe not, you know, mm-hmm. um, they've got Russia here is like orange, which I think is probably propaganda. Probably depends on what part of Russia. You're Anti-Russian in. propaganda yeah. because you know, I've been to Moscow and it, any flush and, you know, but have you been to Eastern Russia? Maybe Eastern. Yeah, your brother was it's in Eastern little, Russia. It's, little, it's probably wild a whole other. Yeah, he's probably pooping in by a tree or something it's out there, right? In ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So where's yeah, when, the red? When, whenever I get depressed, I think of your brother, and yes. I think, no, he survived Eastern Russia for mm-hmm. two made years. It, made it out of the <laughs> in the dead of winter. Lag. Yeah, pooping, Wait. pooping out in the forest in the frozen tundra. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but then they have like, you know, kind of red, which is sort of like, oh, well, these are countries where you, you know, you just do not flush the paper. You mm-hmm. just, and it's customary. They just throw it in the garbage, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and where it goes from there, who knows, uh, some landfill, but anyway, it's kind of a cool map. So if you're traveling in this post COVID world and you just kind of want to know, oh, maybe where, mm-hmm. where, where can I go? Um, it does have uh, some commentary on, uh, um, like, North Korea, uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, it says they don't really do toilet paper. In, mm-hmm. Yeah, those are mostly, like, the they, day they, they use wa- They use water, wow. which is mm-hmm. probably recommended better. You know, it's way better. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so uh, kind of a cool map of the world, which uh, you'll want to... Um, bookmark. Yeah. Oh, and I think it's probably uh, helpful, right? If, especially if you care a lot about like that country's infrastructure, I think that's mainly why that's, those rules are in place. And a lot of it's depending upon the pipes. Yeah. They just because can't the pipes, handle it. Uh, they, the toilet paper gets hung up on the pipes and, mm-hmm. you know, and it just clogs it up. And so they just say, Oh, you know, just throw also, it away. I think so. it's also a nice thing to do walking to, into like a friend's house or something like, do you want me to what, throw it in the trash, wipe, throw it in the trash could, or could, toilet. Just ask every time. Just let them know you're thinking of them. Yeah. And a little bit courteous. And you can be like, you know, since you're not really saying yes or no, I'll just throw it in the trash as a, just as a, as a precaution. <laughs> yeah. You might like yeah. give them a warning, you know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Hey, by the way, I don't know. I don't flush to paper. Yeah. And I'm worried so, about your pipes. You know, so I'm just being, I'm being thoughtful. <laughs> and you guys ca- are so considerate. They, wow. they, might, they might say the yeah. bathroom is closed to you. Yeah. yeah. And you say, well, you know, I know a bed. I can always go in a bed um, <laughs> or the backyard. Channel your inner Amber Heard. Yeah, that might make like me angry. Week. And then I'll have to go and use their bed. I'll squat in their bed. And like, this is what happens. And then it's just, then, then I might have, you know, I might, I might be, it's a lot. But and you be might fun. be banned from the house or you might be welcomed back. And guess what? Or if you're banned You'll from the house, know. I can go outside of the house. Like, oh, what? Your mailbox? There's a gift, <laughs> you know? Love it. First class. Um, First class package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It fits, fits in the box. It ships. So. Oh, man. Well, this is a cool map. Actually, I think I could see myself yeah. referencing that for sure. I'm a 
total rule follower. Um, I think if a rule's in place, there's probably a reason why. And so, oh, perhaps it's a weakness that I have. But So you'd be great in North it, Korea. You know, it might also yeah. be because I recently read the chapter in Rose George's book about um, sanitation workers and Rose George like goes into the sewer system mm. uh, with sanitation workers and they just show her all the problems that are there, clogged pipes because of, you know, tampons or people flush diapers and things down the toilet, things mm-hmm. that like our infrastructure just couldn't handle. Um, so if, you know, like Peru's infrastructure couldn't even handle toilet paper, then it's like, yeah, it might be just really good to know. Yeah, a tampon's you know. going to like destroy the country probably. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand why they, they, why terrorists don't do that more often in those, <laughs> in those places. Like we'll just destroy their pipes, the sewer system. It would really cause quite the problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's guess. Yeah, or that's, or like fat grease. She talks about like this massive, yeah, yeah, drop. massive grease ball. Oh. Yeah, you just yeah. drop some bacon down all yeah. the uh, Pentagon's toilets, yeah. you know, and flush them all. And can you um, imagine you, if you flushed a tampon, then you got charged with domestic terrorism? <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. Yeah, it, it happen. could. Yeah. It could definitely happen. Depends upon your intent, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we should hop into Jeff's episode. He's got a lot of gold for us to talk about. So let's chat with Jeff. Okay, well, Jeff, welcome back to the Zulu Podcast. We're very excited to have you back and and get to spend some singular time with you discussing Mm -hmm. your up-and-coming book, discussing your history and your involvement with the portable sanitation business and sector. So thank you for being on the show. We're excited to hear all that you have to tell us today. I'm excited to be here. I've heard a lot more people talking about the podcast, and so it's just a pleasure to be affiliated. So I really appreciate it. I love it. Well, I would love it if you would start out and tell us a little bit about your background professionally working with portable sanitation sure. in that sector. Okay. Um, I um, After college, I actually worked with IBM for 10 years and um, the Olympics were coming to Atlanta in 1996 and this was 1995 and it was, you know, I'm looking for something to do. And uh, a friend of mine had interviewed for a job in poly portables. There were a many in Georgia. He didn't like the job, but he just introduced me to the whole concept. And I thought, well, maybe we can do a portable restaurant business for a year, help with the Atlanta Olympics, and then I'll go find something else to do. So we uh, we we did. We started up and um, did the Olympics. Um, after that time, though, construction in Atlanta really started to boom, and we had all these units, so why don't we run them out to construction people? And that's that's how it started. And uh, three years later, my wife, who also worked with IBM, she left and joined me, and um, we had the company and sold it in 2017. Hmm. So. That's quite the uh, that's quite the leap from uh, IBM to portable sanitation. Uh, is there any correlation there, or um, the big thing was customer service. I think um, it, it, it was this was you know in the day uh, you know IBM everything was so formal and so you know this the wingtip shoes the white shirts the whole nine yards and I was a more relaxing want to talk to you one on one kind of person and so. Um, Getting involved in the industry, um, you know, immediately, I just, I really, I fell in love with it. Um, before I even started, there was a gentleman uh, by the name of Clyde Sansom, and uh, he's famous in PSAI history, uh, but he um, was from St. Louis, and he had some relatives that lived in the Atlanta area, and I was looking to buy some restroom units, and because he also manufactured them in addition to having a service company. And um, so he said, why don't you come out to St. Louis and spend a week with me and you can see my portable restaurant company. So I did. I rode around with a route driver for a day. I was pick up and delivery for a day. I was in the office doing billing. I was with making sales calls. So really, at the end of that week, I got the chance to see all the people and customers and just get a feel for it. And I was I was hooked. So um that's, that sounded that sounded better than a uh, glass tower with a white shirt and tie, yeah. Well, if, if I only had a nickel for all the times my IBM buddies told me I went from the penthouse to the outhouse, I was <laughs> doing really well. <laughs> but uh, just a, a great industry, and, and to kind of tie the PSAI in, um, told me you know once I started the company, I had a truck, thirty units, starting to do this, build up for the Olympics. He told me about the Portable Sanitation Association, and he said it's just a 
a wealth of information. It's open, it's sharing, you'll learn a lot. And uh, his last piece of advice, and I've said it many times, but he said, kid, don't join the PSAI if you're not going to get involved. And uh, that's kind of been my mantra through the whole time of owning my company. And now that I'm retired, I still work with the association and have those same cherished relationships that I had when we owned this stock. So I'm still enjoying working with the same people, but no customers and no employees. <laughs> I love that. I'm curious to know why he said that and what that meant to you. Like, why why did that stick for you? He, um, the PSAI, um, their signature thing that we do are roundtables. And we'll go to meetings and, you know, there'll be roundtables on 15 different topics and there'll be eight or 10 people at each table and you're just sharing information. And this is a good idea. <laughs> Everybody, don't, don't do what I did. You could all save time and money. Don't do ABC. And it's just such a great networking um, association. And then they have training and all that. So his, uh, his words, I think, meant to, um, you know, the more involved you are, the more you'll learn. You know, if you show up for a meeting every year or two and go on the trade show floor and look at products and, hey, great to see folks and see you next year kind of thing, you're not really fully getting out of the association what you can. And uh, as you know, I mean, our, our business is so unique. You can't go to, you know, Amazon and buy a book on, you know, how to run a portable restaurant business. It's it's a lot of interaction, people talking with each other. And, uh, so well, that, 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 that would be a book I would think you would write, Jeff. I think you could write that <laughs> book, probably. Oh, uh, well, I have, been, I have been working on some uh, history of the, of the PSAI. I, I've enjoyed that. Um, we, uh, yeah, can, can, yeah, can uh, you absolutely. give us a teaser of your, of your, uh, of your project, your, your history yeah. project? It, it's a continuation. 10 years ago, I wrote a little pamphlet about the, um, the history of the association and it was called PSAI through the decades. And it was like 22 pages and had a little bit of history in it and had some people talking and it was all, it was great. Retired in 2017. And then I knew that this was our 2021 was our 50th year. And the number of people who I looked up to, admired, and respect was people who had passed away from the 40th anniversary until getting ready for the 50th. It's like, I need to write this book and get these people to share their stories and their knowledge and preserve it for the future. So that was the, that was the, the implement, I guess, the implementation of it. I started writing an article. We have two newsletters a month. So I've written about a total of about 30. Um, articles about different things, the history of pump trucks and fiberglass units and how the industry started and some famous people in our association. And um, I've really enjoyed doing that. I, I knew just like this much of it. And after doing all the research, I'd have an even more love and appreciation for our industry. So mm -hmm. we're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of around 200 pages, um, you know, some vintage pictures and stories. Um, a lot of it is just Things that people have told me, um, you know, I don't, I don't presume to be an, uh, an, you know, a history expert, but I just tell people I do a little research, and I'm just like a reporting secretary. You tell your story about the history of this or the history of that, and I'll do the writing. So um, should be available probably in another. I'm going to guess maybe another month or two. Um, but um, yeah, we're looking to um, you know, actually have it published in a book form to send to the different people that have contributed and you know helped along the way and then it'll be available online for people just to download or what have you hmm. that. i'm curious to know what the process for writing this has been like are you interviewing people are you reading yeah. you know the stories that they themselves have written is it sort of you know mm -hmm. playing telephone you're hearing these what's that process been like it's interesting you say that, Kelsey. When when it first started, I thought, okay, it's our 50th year. Let me write about our first meeting that occurred 50 years ago. Well, that was a lot easier said than done. Some of the veterans who were no longer with us, um, one gentleman, um, Al Hildy, um, he founded Satellite Industries. Um, he is still with us. He was actually one of the first board members. Um, so I was able to tap some resources there, looking at old newsletters, uh, things like that. So um yeah, it was, um, it, it, it became, uh, it was intimidating at first, but then it became a lot of fun. I just started thinking about topics. Uh, there's a gentleman, uh, Bob Kendall with Cold Publishing. He actually started Pro Pumper Magazine. He started the uh, 
what we used to call the Pumper Show, I guess, which is the WWETT show now. And, um, you know, talked to him and he said how he started and just the number of people I've met has just been, I've really enjoyed it. I, I, sometimes I find myself, it's like, I need to be writing this down, not just listening and appreciating what they're telling me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Is there a story that has stood out most to you over the years or, or even just this year while you've been sort of compiling um, all of these? Yeah, I think um, I knew that when the industry started, um, it, it was, you know, wooden units, you build them yourself, then they transition to fiberglass units. And then um, there was a gentleman, George, George Harding, who got a patent for the plastic portable restaurants, like in the late 60s, and they started making the plastic ones in the 70s. But the part that intrigued me the most were the fiberglass restaurant units. Um, when I was owning my company, we actually had two that were out on a job site. They were all fiberglass units. They'd been there forever. A customer finally said, I don't need them anymore. And so we went to pick them up. And it was just, why did they, why did they do these fiberglass restaurants? I, I have no understanding. So the research was really uh, kind of interesting. Um, prior to that time in the, in the 50s and the 60s, um, if you were a portable restroom operator, you made your own unit. You had three sides, you had a door, you took a 55 gallon barrel, laid it down flat, cut a hole in it, put the top over it, there's your tank. And you went out there and you pumped it and that was you. And you know, if you need 10 more units, you didn't pick up the phone and call anybody, go out to the lumber yard, build 10 more and go deliver them. And what happened eventually is that supply ended up uh, decreasing and the demand in these portable restroom things became so great that they were looking for something to, this, the, we got to have something manufactured. And this is the interesting part for me. Um, in the 1950s in the U.S., uh, of all things, it was plastic fiberglass motorboats became the thing. Everybody had a motorboat, you know, speed around the lake and all that. And some of the early um, people in our industry um, actually took that process, well, we can manufacture fiberglass boats. Why don't we try to fiberglass some of these portable restaurant things? And, uh, you know, the, the people in the industry loved it. They could, they could pick up the phone and say, I need 10 units, send them to me. So they weren't quite as heavy as the wooden units, which were incredibly heavy. Um, and they seemed to work well for a while, but they found out after a while that fiberglass, in some instances, if you get a crack or a cut you can kind of repair it, but then sometimes if, you know, if the roof or the top of the unit cracked, you had to get rid of the whole thing. It just couldn't be repaired. And they also found out that fiberglass uh, seemed to absorb odors, which is not a good thing in our industry. So um, anyway, for a brief period of time, fiberglass was it, spawned by the boating industry of all things. But then that was the next logical step from fiberglass was plastic, and that's what we have today. And, that's how it started. So I, I knew nothing about fiberglass units, except we had two of them in, in our yard at Pit Stop, and I had learned a lot. It was fairly interesting. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned, uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, no, I'm surprised by all of that. Like, <laughs> I didn't even really realize that fiberglass units were a thing. So but yeah, mm -hmm. I feel educated. Jaron, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just uh, speaking to that as far as the ability to absorb odor. I was trying to think of a wooden, you said a 55 gallon barrel uh, mm -hmm. made out of, was it made out of wood or was it a metal? It was 55 metal. gallon metal. And, and you're right. Metal barrel. They, they would, they would, the, the barrel would start to rust. Um, right. But they brought a unit back in. Typically they would have to paint the whole thing. So, you know, you want your unit to look new and your units are made out of wood and they're painted blue, then put a new coat of blue paint on it and, you know, your unit's going to look newer. But um, yeah, they were extremely hard to uh, to clean. Um, yeah. Also, the, the, the technology, the vacuum pump technology was not, at, they had vacuum pumps, they got invented just right after World War II. But at the early days, the vacuum pumps actually were ran off the manifold engine of the pickup truck. And I'm, again, I'm not a parts car person. But anyway, the way I understand it is the, that engine manifold was propelling that um, vacuum pump. And then that's what you put into your wooden unit to pump it out. The pressure wasn't that great. And then a lot of the folks have told me that if you weren't watching what you were doing and your tank got a little bit too full, 
the sludge would backflow into the engine of your truck, and congratulations, you need a new truck engine. So it was a very oh. laborious process early on. And that, that's just, like I said, I've just fallen in love with the industry through the years, just seeing how mm. a group of people kind of persevered and tried to come up with new ways to do things and to provide the service that we provide today. Yeah, so it's those kind of details that I, I think most people that rely upon portable sanitation don't really appreciate. It's just those little uh, mm -hmm. details. Uh, it sounds like a high-risk industry. Hey, you might lose your truck. Hey, mm -hmm. you might uh, overflow. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you probably have stories of um, where things have gone wrong with technology or what have you. But Right, right. Yeah. But uh, the, the other th amazing thing is it's just it's constantly people trying to develop things and improve things like the whole the way restroom trailers got started. And now in recent years, we've had sinks and Santa stands. And so the, the, we keep pushing the envelope and improving our industry, which, you know, I think when you see where we came from, you know, very, very humble beginnings. It's really incredible what we're doing today. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh, well, I'm excited for the book. Um... Yeah, that's going to be very cool. Um, I think we touched on this last time we were talking with you and Veronica, but uh, um, what, what kind of technologies are you seeing employed um, in the near term and maybe in the, in the long run for portable sanitation? Um, definitely um, solar power is becoming a lot more... Um, uh, if, for example, just people don't think about that you're having a, an event in the evening and it sure would be nice to have a light in our unit. So some of the lights now are, you know, solar powered. You can you know, use those. Um, even I've heard, too, from the trailer manufacturers, some, some desire to try to get at least some sort of a alternative. I know when you're delivering a restroom trailer, you're totally dependent upon the customer having the proper electrical and water connections and all of that. So. Um, you know, being able to provide, um, you know, a little bit different ways of um, energy um, it is a good thing. Um, I think the whole hand washing thing, um, I have more and more units now have sinks in them um, that standalone sink stations are, are quite popular. Um, there's a challenge that we as an industry have, and it's no secret, we don't advertise it a lot, but these two-person hand wash sink stations that were so prevalent during COVID, and they still are today, two people can face each other down on the ground, you mash a, a lever, and you can wash your hands. That's wonderful. But those things are not handicapped accessible. So, you know, here's another area where the PSAI is trying to work with the industry and saying, gee, can we develop some of these standalone hand wash sink stations that are also, you know, handicapped accessible? So, um, those are some other, um, again, areas that we as an industry are trying to be proactive and not waiting for, you know, the government or somebody to come forth and say, you know, you're going to be sued because you don't have, you know, ADA accessible sink stations. So hmm. That's what I just appreciate so much about PSAI is that you're, you're setting the standard, right? You're saying, how can we be a thought leader and look at portable sanitation and make it more inclusive, more accessible? How can we be a better resource for our customers who need us? Mm -hmm. um, sort of piggybacking off of Darren's question, I just, I'm curious if you have heard anything about 3D printing portable units. And if that's a thing, I mean, if somebody can 3D print a house, I'm just like, mm -hmm. Hmm, same thing. If we can do a boat with fiberglass and then sanitation, can we do a house? And sanitation units? I've heard only one, one story about that, Kelsey, and it was a, it's a company, um, one of their parts repair companies. They just sell miscellaneous parts. Um, they're looking at some 3D technology because, you know, it, it's every manufacturer, every little piece of satellite and a polyjohn and an Armand unit, they all are different, different parts, different pieces. So um, I think um, there's, at least right now, what I'm hearing is the parts manufacturers are looking at 3D printing. Um, I can see a day, though, it would be very, very nice if you were at your portable restroom company, you know, here in Atlanta or wherever you're from, and you have a XYZ part that broke. If you could go to the catalog for that company and print that little part, put it on the truck, go out there, put it on the unit, and you're, you know, you're still in business kind of thing. Yeah, that would be, that would be super neat. I mean, 
I think the technology aspect of it is all very interesting to see what, what does the future hold? What could it hold? What are the possibilities for it? And, and how can that make life easier for all of us? Right. No, we sold our company in 2017 and it's been five years and now in five years. I mean, the standard for a portable restroom company, of course, your driver has an iPad in the front seat of his truck. Of course, your driver has the in-camera, in-cab camera, the dash cam and all that. And, you know, just with GPS and everything, I mean, it's, I, I just, like I said, kind of being retired for five years, I'm just amazing how it continues to grow and expand the industry. Mm. Yeah, Jeff, I know, you, I know you're retired. I know Veronica has uh, taken over the, the helm and, and moving the PSAI forward. And, you know, we expect to have her back on the, mm-hmm. back on the podcast again uh, soon, but uh, uh, what, mm-hmm. what's the, uh, I know. I know you're still involved as a volunteer, and um, obviously writing the history and all of that. Uh, what's the current makeup of PSAI, and is it um, a pretty even balance between suppliers and operators? Uh, is it mainly? Um, I know when I went to the went to the show back in Houston a few years ago, um, it seemed like it was uh, you, know, you had a, a healthy mix there. Yes, there really is. And, and to Veronica's credit, um, she is looking at um, membership opportunities and just her youthful enthusiasm in terms of recruitment of members and things like that. If I had to guess right now, and I'm glad she's going to come on after I am, but she can correct me, but I think, I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 member companies. And if I had to guess, I'd probably say maybe a, you know, 300 might be operating companies and maybe 100 suppliers. I mean, just in that realm. Um, we do have some international members. Um, that is an area that um, we're looking to recruit on. When I was writing the history book, I went ahead. There's a group in uh, Ottawa uh, called OASIS, Ontario Association of Septi- Septage Industry Specialists, OASIS. And there's another group in Europe, uh, Portable Sanitation Europe. Um, I contacted the executive directors of both of those associations. and both about 30 years old. They never had a history of their association written. So I said, let me do it. And you can have it and we'll put it in our book and everything. So we have reached oh, wow. out to these other associations and we are looking for what are some things that we can do to work together. And mm-hmm. um, like I said, I think um, I know in the fall, Veronica is going to the ACES convention, which I don't think anybody from PSAI ever has. So um, yeah, we're looking to, you know, definitely looking to, to continue to grow and expand the, the industry. Hmm. Right. That's great. Yeah. And continue that, what you're saying, that round table discussion, right. But make it international this time. What, what right. does Europe need? What does Canada need? What does South America need? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, the, the beautiful thing is that all of our needs are so different just geographically or regionally. And so learning, mm-hmm. you know, Europe's strategy for portable sanitation and, and, taking bits and treasures from what they do and adding them into our market, I think is a really, mm-hmm. just a really wise and prudent thing to do. And mm-hmm. also I just feel like I got to congratulate you. That's so, mm-hmm. so incredible that you'll also be including Ottawa or Oasis in, in Ottawa, their right. history. And then Francis as well. That's, that's very, very neat. Right. We, we had another gentleman. Um, it's, a, it's an organization in India. I don't know exactly how large they are, but um, he was on the PSAI board when I served. And uh, he actually uh, came up with the Portable Sanitation India. And the last I looked, they were still, you know, an organization. But uh, again, I think the, this you know, worldwide economy and certainly what we do in our industry, we're pretty gosh darn unique. So the more we can expand that internationally and work with each other, I think it'll be better. Hmm. I love it. That's well, exciting. I'm excited to hear to see the book come out, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, definitely highlight the book and uh, dive into it. So, yeah, and Jeff, if you've got um, like a digital copy, a PDF, or anything of your pamphlet that you released a few years ago, we would love to link that in the show notes below as well. Okay, yes, I and can, anything can... else that you would love to share. Sure, I'll be happy to send that up. I, I, when I wrote the, you know, 22 pages, it's like, oh my gosh, this is tremendous. But then, like I said, when we started the 50th one, it's like, gee, I never thought about this or that. How did that start? Tell me about pump trucks. And so it just kind of exploded. But I've really enjoyed it. It's been, it's been really interesting. Love it. I totally want to find, I want to find a, uh, 
I want to find one of these wooden units and just to uh, <laughs> either get a photograph with it I'm, or in it, or maybe maybe you have uh, maybe you have one out in the backyard. You know, we could uh, go check out. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you, um, I did two of the articles about wooden units. One was the history of the wooden unit. And then the second one, people send in pictures of their old wooden units. And uh, so um, I've got those two articles. Um, all of the articles, each individual one is in the PSAI website for members. So what I can do is I can send that to you guys and you can look at it and, you know, that type of thing. But yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. They were very, very sturdy units. Um, I know at the big Woodstock concert in 1969, yeah. I talked to a company that provided units there. Of course, they didn't have near enough for the hundreds of thousands of people. But um, he shared a couple of pictures with me. Um, and you just, you know, the unit that you built for Woodstock, New York might be four feet by four feet by whatever. And the person building the units in Dallas, Texas, there's maybe four and a half feet by two feet by no Nothing, if you just, your own. Nothing standard. Exactly. That's great. Well, yeah, I'd love to get, I'd like, to, I'd like to get a photo with it. I'll let Kelsey try it out. Like actually try the, <laughs> you, know, you know, if it's, if it's still, if it's still in use, you know, maybe, maybe there, maybe there are none that are usable now, but it'd be kind of fun to try it. That's right. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, it's been an absolute pleasure. We are out of time for this interview, but again, we'd love to have you back on the sure. show. And like Darren said, we'd love to link anything in your show notes and excited for the release of PSAI history. Well, thank you. I really appreciate what you guys are doing for our industry as well. So anytime. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great Thanks, day. Jeff. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, man. I love chatting with Jeff. I'm glad we got to have him back on the show mm-hmm. and, and dive a little bit deeper into the history of portable sanitation and, and his history specifically, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he definitely, I mean, I'm excited to see his, uh, book about the history of mm-hmm. the portable sanitation Alliance or associate portable sanitation association international. It's a long word PSAI for short. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, super interesting. The evolution of the industry, and it's great he's taken the time uh, to to write it. I mean, if nobody, yeah. if he, somebody's got to write it, otherwise somebody has to. It. It's like where did we come from? You know. Um, but yeah, he also after the uh, interview emailed uh, some uh, images of some of those old wooden toilets. I mean, if like you needed mm. a portable, if you needed a portable restroom, they just oh, okay, they went and got some wood and built one. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, all different shapes and sizes and. I mean, now it's pretty, they're pretty uniform, but, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, fascinating to, to learn the history about that. And, uh, wow. yeah, I I'm would... excited to, I'm excited to see Jeff, uh, we're, they're doing the, I think they're doing another convention in, um, in a San Antonio in, um, November. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, I saw him at the Houston one. That's where I got this hat. Cool. My, oh uh, yeah. This Party. is one of the, one of the, um, it's classy. I mean, this place, this place is, this place in Houston was super awesome. It was, uh, um, uh, they had barbecue right next door, the porta potties. I mean, they, they, they knew, you know, they had, yeah, you know, that was on purpose. Hand washing, <laughs> hand washing between, mm-hmm, but yeah, good. you know, you could check out all the cool technology. So but it was I mean, fun. I think it'd be cool if, and maybe we ought to like shoot this idea to Veronica, but I think it would be cool if they set up like a history of portable sanitation a, section right at their ticket. November conference. Like I'd love to see a wooden one next to a fiberglass one next to mm-hmm. a plastic one. I mean, somebody's got to have one out in the backyard. Like, oh, somebody's I've got, got this whole. Has anyone ever made a, a porta potty made of just glass? Actually, like, like, a, like a beautiful. Just a, I think there's an Asian country that that's how they do public. Yeah, public. Um, toilets as they are they're just out of glass but it's one view glass so you're in and you can look out but nobody can see in oh so it's very i would hate that what's interesting is i don't (laughs) know if it's the same one but it had some sort of uh what's it's some sort of technology that once you put a current to the glass Mm -hmm. it'll become opaque oh yeah the cia then then when it stop when it stops it'll it'll go clear again yeah and the wow. way the way this one worked, I think it was in Tokyo, where you could see in and see the toilet there, but then when somebody went inside and shut the door and turned on the system, 
it went opaque, right? Yeah. Wow. And, you know, my thought was, what if there was a power outage? And yeah, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. like you've well, got to really trust that. Yeah. System. Yeah. Well, that, that yeah. anyway. Yes. But yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, glass. Yeah, glass. That, that would be so jarring and yeah. horrifying if it was the one way glass and you're just <laughs> sitting there looking at everyone walking around you as you're like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. having an Amber Heard moment. <laughs> but I just, I would hate that. Just looking, oh. I would have to like close my eyes. I know. Like, yeah, you'd feel so exposed, right? So mm-hmm. that's why we're so thankful for yeah. all plastic. the plastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, maybe for as tough as right. on either, the environment. Either yeah. an Amber Heard moment or a boo boo moment. Boo boo. We can't. Boo-boo. Sorry, we don't know yet. We don't want Amber Heard to come after us. So it yeah. may have been boo boo, boo boo, Amber Heard. Just nobody yeah. will ever know. We'll never know. Can't get to the bottom of that. It's impossible. Yeah. Oh man, but I think that would be fun to see Jeff at the conference and and have him there. Yeah, totally. you know, talking a little bit more about his expertise. He's he's really done so much and mm-hmm. yeah, so so he much has enthusiasm. So many, like, yeah. Little cool facts, you know, that you would yeah. never know, like right. about the fiberglass he'd absorbing be, scent. Like, he'd I would be so have never fun known that. at like a dinner party because you're just like eating, and he's like, "Did you know that you used to make porta potties out of fiberglass?" And you're like. <laughs> All right. I didn't know that. And then you could just go off about poop for an hour. As they eating. make boats out of it. Why yeah. not? Yes. Boats, uh, really though. Yeah, well, cars. Make, yeah, car. That'd be, that'd be a car. Is there carbon fiber porta potties? We did talk about 3D printing. Oh, yeah. Um, which, you know, I read this morning that uh, this is kind of unrelated, but I think it says a lot for the technology of sanitation and how far that could come. Somebody had. 3D printed an ear with human cells and they transplanted it onto a, mm-hmm. a girl who was born with some deformed ear. Anyway, it's functioning wonderfully. So I think that there's a lot to be said for the like, future of portable sanitation well, like and 3D you, printing. Carbon fiber. Well, I like I that like you, you, you heard about that girl getting that ear and you're like, poop. Like, what, what will this it do? It was 3D printing. Like, what will this do for the poop? world and in, 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 in porta potties. Is it? Well, uh, yes. yeah, when, when you've been doing the podcast for so long now, like Kelsey has. Oh, I forget. Every time you know, some news comes out, she's like, how is this related to mm-hmm. toilets? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How can this improve sanitation yeah, and exactly save that. lives? Yeah. That's she's what living I'm thinking and breathing about. It, That's you know? what no, I'm like, No, I get it. I'm not in you it know? yet. I'm not, I'm not like fully underwater with this yet. You know, I'm still <laughs> yeah. on the surface, still bobbing around. I need, yeah, yeah. I need to dive deep. You need to dive deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like now I'm thinking about submarines. How do they poop on submarines? Never thought about that. They we just should, blast it out. Should, we uh, ought to look into that. Yeah, submarine yeah. poop. And I, don't, I guess that's a real. They could just shoot it out the yeah, torpedo. Blast it. You know, use it as a weapon. What do they hold? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Pressurized poop. Yikes. That's what. Yeah, sunk. weaponization of poop. That's where we're headed. And that's. I think in the future. Recycle, reuse. Again, we're coming back to Amber Heard. I think. She's got this all figured out. Weaponization of poop. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. She's know. a genius, you're I right. guess, you, you know, guys. That's but but that's, 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 a, that's like CIA she blackmail really kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Boo boo, though. Boo boo is the boo-boo mystery. Boo boo could be a little bit conniving, a little boo-boo's, bit. Boo boo is a little, mis- you know, those little dogs are mischievous, you know? Mm-hmm. They like, really are. Yeah. You know? I don't trust just, little just dogs. Just hang out with the miniature dogs and yeah. you realize. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of leaning, I'm kind of blaming boo boo. Yeah, we're, we're, we need to cut we'll Amber see. a break. Are we boo- she had a rough week. Are we so? Uh, we're boo boo truthers. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll, maybe we'll do some more investigation there. But um, mm-hmm. well, anyway. thanks everybody for joining us on this week. We hope you enjoyed the interview with Jeff as well as our goofing around. We're grateful to have you here. Grateful to be able to talk a little bit more about the sanitation crisis and what Zulu is doing to improve that around the world. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, Zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at Zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.